All right, so let's take a look at the game Maus vs. Fnatic, uh, and this will be game two of their three-game series in the Raid Call Dota 2 League, run by the organization Evil Geniuses and primarily commentated on by AC and Draskal. I didn't, uh, I got a little bit, I came home a little bit too late to actually cast the first game. I did watch most of it, so Maus is actually going into this up a game, so they're up one on Fnatic, and in the first game, Maus ran a... Uh, basically a protecting black as their carry. He went Life Stealer, and it went up against one of Fnatic's favorite compositions, which is they ran both the combination of Wisp and Chaos Knight for that mobile ganking early to mid game presence, going into sort of a Phantom Lancer later on massive pushing power with Keeper of the Light protecting them. It's a fairly inventive composition. It's one that Fnatic favors. They play the Phantom Lancer a lot. They play the Chaos Knight a lot for Era and um, for Henny, but it didn't quite work out for them Maus was able to get Black so such a dominant position, and they were able to get a lot of kills in the mid game and really turn the game around. So it never got to the point where Phantom Lancer was sort of this formidable pushing force. They would always just pick him off, and it also they sort of were just able to diffuse Fnatic's ability to get kills early on with the Chaos Knight and the Wisp. Chaos Knight started the game one and five, and he you know he never really managed to claw himself back in effectively. I think I have Dota muted, so let me turn this up really quick. Yes, I did in fact have Dota muted. This will be better. All right, so we're into game number two, and Maus is going to have first pick in this game. They already picked up the, they already banned out the Lone Druid, so they don't want to see that additional pushing power. They don't want to see sort of the, the very powerful presence the Lone Druid brings, and really he is definitely one of the marquee heroes of the current patch. He hasn't really received any nerfs or changes. Just as people sort of get used to where he slots into the meta game, he fits in very very well. Fnatic, meanwhile, they take out the Magnus. Magnus was one of the heroes they let through for Maus last time, and sort of the mass... Maus actually had both Magnus and Enigma, who have very similar ultimates, but they're just able to do a lot of AoE crowd control, so they're really able to disable lots of your heroes. And so in every big engagement, Fnatic sort of had to live in fear of this double crowd-controlling style that Maus could play, and it just it kept killing them again and again and again in, in bigger engagements later on. And so... Fnatic chooses to take out Magnus, which is a very smart idea. They sort of don't want to face that again. And then Maus takes out the Nyx Assassin. This is a hero whose stature has grown drastically in the last three to four weeks or so, rising up from sort of an occasional pick into a more and more prolific uh, pick in the Chinese scene and the Eastern scene, into sort of a, a fringe pick in the Western scene. Then it became all the way up to sort of first band status in the, in the Chinese Eastern scene, which is where he's sort of at now. He's a close to first pick priority and he's sort of a, a sometimes a first band here and basically all across the world. And the reason that is, is Nyx Assassin is just such an excellent support. He brings just a huge toolkit. He forces the other team to have to deal with the fact that he can stealth around, which is usually something one of your core heroes does. Like if you choose to make one of your one of your big farming heroes, you know, a Ricky Maru or a Klinx or even a bounty hunter, then the other team is like, okay, we have to spend money to deal with that. We need to pick up Dust of Appearance or we need to pick up Sentry Words. We need some way to reveal stealth. In this case, Nyx Assassin brings you that need, but he's a support. So when you're spending a lot of money trying to deal with a support, you can't spend as much of your team's money trying to deal with their carry players or their core players. So that's sort of one of the things that makes Nyx Assassin so such a worthy hero, in addition to his incredible crowd controlling power, in addition to the fact that he's uh, he does quite a bit of damage, in addition to the fact that he makes a, uh, a solo hero against a tri-lane's life a living hell just by draining all their mana with mana burn. So Nyx Assassin, just overall a very, very strong hero. And Templar Assassin's another hero that you'll sometimes see cop a ban in this first section. It's a very strong mid. One thing that you do see is that there's really... So you see that they picked up Batrider. There's really this element to the two-ban metagame where both teams only get two bans before the first picks, where you have to... I heard someone in the last game actually describe it as pick your poison, and this is exactly what you sort of have to do. If you don't want to see Magnus and you don't want to see Nyx or Lone Druid or Templar Assassin, that still leaves at least three extremely powerful heroes in the pool. So you have your Undying, who's caught frequently catches first bans, but he's going to get through if you choose to ban these heroes. You've got your Dark Seer, and you've got your Bat Rider. So those are very, very, very good heroes. Bat Rider's got the disabling, he's got the damage, he's got the team fight capability, and just a fantastic mobility and initiation and setup. Dark Seer has the great team fight utility, the almost peerless solo lane capacity. 
he and pretty good damage and just scaling quite well, getting pretty tanky, good anti-carry capability with his wall of replica. And Andaya's got the huge team fight and enormous lane presence as well. So it's sort of which heroes, which of the many extremely powerful heroes do we sort of want to give away? It's less of a matter of how can we sort of define the other team's game plan right from the band stage? Because you really can't do that with the amount of bands that you're given now. So as sort of a as sort of captains, what you have to think about is that their philosophy is not can we limit the other team's options completely with the first few bands and more what do we as a team really not want to see like from any team and, and band that out it's rare or rarer now that you see these early two bands being used as team specific bands sort of the other team so take out a hero that the other team likes you still see it um people playing against no tide hunter will still ban the lone druid people playing against empire will sometimes ban uh clinks but still, usually those are confluences of we already don't want to see this hero and the other team's good at him. So we already don't want to see Lone Druid and the other team plays a mean Lone Druid. We already don't want to see Templar Assassin and the other team as a, a player who is really good at Templar Assassin. So continuing with this draft, uh, Maus picks up another two great heroes. They pick up the very strong carry in the form of Lifestealer, just getting more and more popular. Sort of uh, strength carries are pretty pretty good in the current metagame, and Lifestealer is one of the premier strength carries. This rage is absolutely huge for early team fights. Six seconds of magic immunity at max rank on only a 15 second cooldown against these big mid game team fight teams that do a lot of magic damage. That's just really really excellent. He's got good damage. He can chew through the other strength carry options via his feast so if you have you know a tanky carry lifestealer directly essentially counters that because he's able to, to just feast on them so great pickup definitely and keeper of the light brings that really great lane presence another thing is that you never it's rare that you want to have the other team have both undying and keeper of the light that's a very very strong combo they're able to do a ton of damage undying can slow you and keeper of the light can continue hitting you with that illuminate Undying and Keeper of the Light are so strong, not even just in a tri-lane, you can put them as two against a tri-lane and they will sometimes just dominate that, that tri-lane. So just really, really strong combination. So part of the reason Maus picks up this Keeper of the Light, in addition to him being one of the strongest support options, uh, the reason they're picking him instead of maybe some of the other options that they have, like Rubik, for instance, which Kurokai really likes to play, is that they want to deny Fnatic the ability to have this Undying Keeper of the Light combination. And Undying picks up another very popular support option, somebody that's gained a ton of popularity recently, which is the Shadow Demon. And the nice thing about Shadow Demon is that he's able to play both very offensively and very defensively. So this Disruption ability is quite versatile. It takes somebody out of the fight for two and a half seconds, and at the end of that you generate two illusions of them that do pretty decent damage. So early on it's sort of a gank setter upper. You can sort of ensure that somebody can't get back to their tower in time, do more damage to them, block their escape with the illusions, and just set them up for other crowd control abilities. Later on in the game you can use Disruption to make sure that when your opponent is hitting one of your heroes, that hero actually doesn't die and the opponent's sort of forced to, forced to back off them and fight them for a little while so uh both teams sort of have some of their some of their hero setups uh fanatic we're definitely going to see picking up their sort of carry in their mid and the, actually dark seer is an option in the middle but then they sort of still need a solo lane hero unless they want to do something unorthodox we've seen teams run zero heroes in the off lane recently more and more so that definitely is still an option in that respect but definitely fanatic is going to need a carry and consequently when you look at the bands for Maus in the second phase they're taking out some of the most popular carry options so they've taken out the faceless void the luna and also the brewmaster uh part of the reason they took out brewmaster is he's pretty strong against lifestealer he has some play against lifestealer which is which is always good um, but the other things are just Luna and Faceless Void. These are two of the strongest carries in the game. They don't want Fnatic just being able to go over the top of, of Maus, and so they, they pick up these two. What's interesting is that they have left Phantom Lancer open. This is a hero Fnatic likes as their primary carry quite a bit. But Phantom Lancer is a little less effective early game and much less defensible early game without this Keeper of the Light. Keeper of the Light Phantom Lancer is a very strong combo that Fnatic used to pretty good effect in last game. It wasn't enough to make them win, but it was enough to, you know, put the fear in Maus a little bit and get a, good, a decent early advantage. Uh, and the there's really twofold reasons for it. Phantom Lancer starts out with really low health points and not a lot of ability to escape until he picks up his Doppelwalk. And so Keeper of the Light can defend him by having this Illuminate, which just deals tons of damage to anybody that actually approaches him. So that's the one aspect of it. And the second aspect is that Phantom Lancer has a pretty strong nuke on his Q. It does pretty good damage, and it's a slow, and the illusion that it generates deals damage. But it costs a lot of mana. So Phantom Lancer has this chakra magic that refills the Phantom Lancer's mana so he can really harass anybody out of lane and dom dominate his lane and get a lot of farm early. And if you can get a lot of farm early on Phantom Lancer, you know, that's 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 what you want in a hard carry, is that uh, you want that ability to sort of get that farm early to, to dominate later on. 
So I don't think they're going to take Phantom Lancer in this case because they don't have the, they don't quite have the support makeup that they would want for that. So I did mention that Mouse Sports really likes Rubik. So you can see that since Rubik was not banned, uh, they've picked up the they've picked him up right here for Quirk Guy. So this is going to be great. There's uh, quite a few uh, appealing. Uh, spell steal targets on Fnatic's team. There's this Demonic Purge. There's Disruption. Absolutely. There's uh, Undying spells are okay. Tombstone definitely could be could be huge. And then uh, Darkseer spells are all quite good too. So some strong options for this for this Rubik, and it's something that it's something Maz are going to feel comfortable with. They feel comfortable with a lineup like this. Just talk about Fnatic's bans. They take out not not one, not two, but three of the heroes that Maz used in the last game, and Maz actually takes out another one. So. Almost Mouse's entire team has been banned from the previous from the previous game to this game. So they take out the Enigma for that additional crowd control. They really don't want to just get shut down like that, especially through BKB. And uh, they take out Chen for the the heals in the early team fight. Fnatic's looking to be going a little later than Mouse are, so it makes sense. And then they take out the Queen of Pain for just additional team fight destruction potential. Queen of Pain actually went fourteen and two in the previous game, so that was a very very dominant performance for Fanta. Nice. So they pick up Gyrocopter, and actually the ban of the Enigma in some respects signals the possibility of a Gyrocopter pick. Enigma and Magnus have, their crowd control goes through BKB, and Gyrocopters typically rely on picking up that BKB to actually keep them alive and able to deal a ton and ton of damage. Gyrocopter is, uh, I think he's not an extremely popular pick, but he's always an option you have to watch out for, because if he's able to get his farm, if he's able to build up first uh, the sort of standard Luna defensive items, like the, the drums, the Ring of Akala, the BKB, he can then go pure damage, and it, it, the more damage he goes, the stronger he becomes, and he can really just blow up your entire team with it. But, for their fifth pick, and this is extremely unorthodox, Fnatic pick up Alchemist. So, this is a hero, I think we saw one pickup of him in, a, in one of the smaller Asian tournaments, but that's been about it, and Alchemist has received continuous buffs, so... He's received more and more buffs in every patch trying to make him sort of a viable competitive hero and teams haven't been that willing to try him out but we're, we're gonna see how he does in this and this is interesting because this gives them two heroes who require quite a bit of farm perhaps they'll actually use this gyrocopter not as a farming hero but maybe as a mid they could put gyrocopter mid and and then use him as the number two and then have alchemist as the side lane carry alchemist is actually a possible uh, dual lane mid as well but i, I don't think we'll see that it looks like we're gearing up for maybe an early engagement. They're, Fnatic are definitely sending all five to the bottom lane, so they're going to try to get a pick off on one of these two, either the Life Stealer or the Keeper of the Light. Meanwhile, Maus picks up Night Stalker, so this is probably going to be their mid. They could run a dual mid with this Rubik providing support for this Night Stalker because a lot of heroes are actually able to harass Night Stalker quite a bit and get him out of the lane, so a little bit of support from the Rubik would definitely not be remiss in that respect. And if they do run the Night Stalker mid, which is like that they're going to, they're actually going to run Batrider as their solo lane. Batrider is a pretty competent solo lane hero. Once he reaches level 3 and he has all three of his abilities, he's able to push people away, he's able to get away on impass impassable ground. I don't know why I missed that. I knew it was going to happen. I'm really sorry about that. They, they kill the Keeper of the Light. So I, I, for what it's worth, I did say that there was going to be a First Blood, but I'm an idiot, so I forgot to actually highlight it. But the really nice thing is that they actually get that on era. So he is already going to have his Boots of Speed, and that's fantastic for Alchemist early. It gives him that additional ability to escape. So people who may not have actually seen Alchemist in action, let me let me quickly provide a drill down on his abilities, because we've discussed sort of the other heroes here. We, uh, Maus sort of has a very scrappy... Uh, gank ability team. So Lifestealer has this ability, is this ultimate that he can jump in a fellow hero. One of the best heroes to jump into and wait inside is Batrider, because he'll pick up that blink dagger, he'll pick up that four staff, he'll jump in, and you can jump right out of him and actually get, get an easy kill that way. And they have very great mobility with this Night Stalker, with the Batrider, and so they'll really be trying to scrap and, and kill people on Fnatic's team, especially this Alchemist. This is going to be a very high priority target for these ganks, and that's why it's actually so crucial that Eric gets this early boots of speed. Once he's level 6, he will have a ton of movement speed with uh, either phase boots or whatever boots he ends up going for, and his ultimate, which gives him additional movement speed. But the... Task number one for Mouse Sports is going to be using this Bat Rider and using this Night Stalker as they develop to get pickoffs. So Fnatic has actually opted to put the Dark Seer middle rather than the Gyrocopter. I don't feel that confident in Gyrocopter as a mid, which is entirely fair. They're putting Gyrocopter on the solo safe lane to go up against this Bat Rider, which actually is an even rougher lane for him. So perhaps they should have put the Bat Rider, mid, uh, the Gyrocopter mid. I think they thought maybe the Bat Rider would be mid or something. Um, 
Darkseer is actually able, better able to deal with Batrider than Gyrocopter is. So this is going to be, it's going to be tough, and we're going to have to take a look at how Henny actually gets his farm in this lane. So in the middle, we've got this Darkseer up against this Nightstalker. Darkseer is definitely favored to win the lane against the Nightstalker substantially, because Nightstalker needs to be in melee to get his last hits, which means this Ion Shell is going to do a lot of harassment damage to Fata. So the challenge for Mouse Sports definitely is, is partially to make sure that this Nightstalker actually is able to get the ganks, is able to go down, go down south and try to kill off some of these players. But yeah, we see the great damage from the Keeper of the Light already doing quite a bit to this uh, Shadow Demon. We do throw out a stun, I think just to throw out a stun on Black, that wasn't ever going to be really a kill setup. So let's talk about Alchemist. The linchpin of Alchemist is that he's a, he's a hard carry, he needs a ton of items to be effective. He needs more items, I would say, to actually become a threatening hero than almost any other hero in the game. So how, how does Ice Frog, the designer of Dota, counterbalance that? Well, since Alchemist needs so much money to be effective... Actually, we're going to get a gank on Alex here again. Great pickup on that Alchemist. He's unable to keep hitting Alex. He might actually get away. There's going to require a very, very clever use of spells by the Sun Dying to actually kill him off. Nope, he is, he is safe, and he actually uses a health potion to get back up. Really good lift by... Oh, and they're turning it right around. Alchemist taking a lot of damage. You can see he's just not very strong early. And so the Keeper of the Light throw and additional melee from Life Stealer is enough to get him a kill. And actually, the Shadow Demon is in a lot of trouble now, too. He has such low HP. You can see that defensive disruption to keep himself alive for that critical one extra second. Great use of the spell. And actually, they pick off Black on the on the on with the Soul Catcher on the way back. And Alchemist runs back in. He's going to put a stun on Rubik. Will this be enough to actually kill Rubik? Tons of damage there. Actually, it's enough to get a double kill on Nocell on this Undying. So they turn this right around, and Darkseer is coming in as well. Uh, essentially unnecessarily, because the fight's already over. But Fnatic turns that right around. They have the, the quick thinking on the comeback from Era. He manages to get the stun off. It deals almost max damage, and that's enough to, to really bring that Rubik down very, very quickly. And something has to be said, that that defensive disruption from Fly My, Fly, Fly My Shekel, was that Fly, Fly My Duckling? The defensive disruption on himself gave him time, gave so much time for uh, Mouse not to kill him off, that he actually got Soul Catcher onto Black on the way back, which Soul Catcher makes them take 20% more damage, and that was enough that the Sun Dying was able to deal the rest of the damage on the Life Stealer. So they lose their carry, but Mouse loses their carry in return, and so it's, it really balances out that, that performance. So Alchemist, sorry, I, things keep happening, so I want to cover them, but let's go back to what Alchemist does. How do we counterbalance the fact that Alchemist needs Needs tons of items to be effective. Well, he's got this ability, Grievel's Greed. It used to be called Goblin's Greed, but there are no goblins in the Dota 2 universe, so don't call it Goblin's Greed. So Grievel's Greed makes it so that in a window, you get more gold for each kill that you for each, each kill that you actually get with the Alchemist. So what you're gonna see is when we look at this lane, you're gonna see big yellow numbers pop out, and that's the additional gold that Alchemist is getting on every single kill. And it stacks. So right now he gets four gold extra for every single creep kill. But if he gets two creep kills in about a 30 second window, Rubik has haste and this is going to be huge. They're right back on error, and he's not level 6 yet for that additional tankiness and move speed. They managed to get away though. Again, a good disruption, good use of this Shadow Demon to really play defensively and save him repeatedly. And it's threatening to dive too far against an Undying just because he's got such counterattack potential with the Tombstone, the Decay. So. If he gets two kills in a 30 second window, then it suddenly becomes, you know, uh, it, it's five gold. And then in the next, if he gets it again, it's six gold. So he gets more and more gold. And as he gets stacked, at max rank, he actually gets 10 extra gold for every single creep kill, which stacks four with everything. And so it can go all the way up to 30. At any rank, it can go up to 30 gold, but that's unrealistic at rank one. At rank four, Alchemist essentially gets to the point where he's making 30 extra gold on every single creep kill, so almost double. And that's enormous. That means Alchemist is earning gold at just a vastly accelerated rate, and it can actually get the items he needs to be effective. Now, his other two abilities, you'll see that he already has three abilities in Unstable Concoction, which is his stun. Alchemist's stun is one of the reasons why he's a much maligned hero, and the reason is, you see these numbers above his head? Well, he actually just managed to send Korka a huge stun from Korka on the way back. They do actually not lose anybody quite yet. Yeah, Shadow Demon does get picked off. So they trade Rubik for Shadow Demon. Pretty even trade, but it looks like they're still pursuing Alex. They might try to get another stun with this unstable concoction. Is he going to pop it? Yes, he is. They are going to get the stun. That will get the kill. He, d Undying, doesn't wait for Alchemist to do that, which is interesting. So not quite as many kills as Alchemist as they may want. Four kills for Undying, though, so that's fantastic. They're actually going to go for yet another stun. You can see he actually went the early magic stick to give himself more mana, and he's got the Basilius to give himself more mana region. Night Stalker runs in. He's doing tons of damage to this Alchemist. He really needs to get the stun off. He doesn't get the stun off. That is enormous. And when I say much maligned, that is why. The fact that his stun hit himself there is just really, really unfortunate. 
if you run out of the six second timer on the alchemist stun, it actually stuns you. It stuns you, the alchemist, rather than the person that you meant to stun. So the fact that he delayed so long there and actually stunning somebody, he probably should have shot it on Nightstalker, meant that he got stunned. And that's really, really unfortunate. Meanwhile, Rubik actually navigates after his death up to the top lane, manages to get the pick off on Gyrocopter, and these are huge kills for Mel's. Any delay in development that they can do to this Alchemist and this Gyrocopter is going to be enormous for them. Gyrocopter, he's doing okay. He, has, he does have 30 last hits, so he's not letting the, the Batrider harass get to him at all, which is which is great. He's actually out hit that last hitting Batrider substantially. How is he doing that? Is he flat cannon? No, he's actually using uh, Q and W, which is really, really smart. Frequently, Gyrocopter is interested in going a carryish route. will take ranks of Flat Cannon earlier, but in this case, Gyrocopter took his other two just to deal massive damage back to the Bat Rider. Great silence from Fata. Now that it's nighttime, the silence lasts very, very long, so Darkseer wasn't able to haste away or escape in any meaningful sense. And so that's fantastic for this Night Stalker. That's a lot. With the DD rune, it was just able to deal so much damage there. And now two kills on the board. So even though he was slightly disfavored in the early laning, that's 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 definitely gets him right back into the picture and definitely is exactly what they want. Is that another kill on Gyrocopter? Yes, it is. I missed it again. I'm sorry. So now with this Rubik, now Gyrocopter's in a lot of trouble in this lane. When it was a one-on-one -on -one lane, he did fine, but now he's picked up two deaths in a very short span of time, and that's because Rubik just really provides that a ton of additional support there. Great disruption there. One of the interesting things, Alchemist actually did not stun himself that time because Shadow Demon disrupted him just before he ran out of time. Again, if, if these six seconds expire, instead of stunning your target, you stun yourself. In that case, it wasn't that he that he was ineffective, it's that Black popped his rage at the correct time, making him magic immune and not a legal target for the Alchemist stun. And so in that case, Black was just completely unable to actually stun him. This is one of the disadvantages of using Alchemist against Lifestealer, is that you, you are never gonna land that stun on the Lifestealer. That, that is not going to happen. Stun comes up again on Alex, and it does quite beefy damage at this stage. With this Undying, who already does a ton of damage, these are easy kills on this Keeper of the Light. That's part of the reason Rubik left. The massive amount of damage that they can actually deal with the Soul Catcher and with the magic damage coming out from Undying and this Alchemist stun is actually pretty substantial, and it can really take a squishy hero down. It's not going to take Black down, and that's their problem. They they don't have the tools right now to actually get kills on Black, but they'd, they'd love to try. They're casting lots of spells, and you can see Black built the Magic Wand as well. Since so Alchemist and Black both have the Magic Wand to give themselves additional regen and make themselves actually able to survive. So, meanwhile, uh, so let's take a look at the item development. So, Batrider has his Tranquil Boots and 862 more gold. This is fantastic. He's got his two kills already. He's developing quite well. Uh, sorry, I actually missed this. They actually get a kill here. No Tail's still chasing after this Rubik, but it looks like Arrow's going to have to back out. He doesn't quite have his ultimate, which is unfortunate. Uh, Rubik, meanwhile, stole the stun. Here it comes back on the Undying, and that gets another kill. Meanwhile, Fata... No, Arrow's too far away to actually dive on that. But those are more big kills for Amalus. They're really... Like I said, they want this sort of scrappy, highly mobile killing force, and they, that's exactly what they're getting. This Night Stalker is generating the kills in this bottom lane to turn the tide here. And this rotation from Korokai going to the right lane at the right time to get kills is also very substantial. They'll probably pick up the tower from this as well. So two more abilities that we have to talk about on the, in terms of Alchemist. He's got this Acid Spray. And so Acid Spray is uh, it reduces dam armor, and it does damage over time in a fairly large radius. And it, and it lasts a long time as well. But sort of the downside of this ability is people can sort of just move out of the acid. But in a sustained team fight where people have to stay in a certain place, acid can be quite effective. He actually pu puts up his stun. I don't know if he'll be able to use it. Huge Rubik stun using the Alchemist stun there. And a huge follow-up with the Keeper of the Light column of damage. This column of damage is just so good when people are constrained to a tight area that in that case it just dealt a ton of damage and prevented Fnatic from really chasing quite as much as they would have liked considering they brought four heroes over to do it. Uh, I mean, actually they had all of their heroes here because also the gyrocopter it picks up yet another death just quite vulnerable this early still and especially vulnerable to sort of big damage from the fact that rubik stole alchemist's highest value spell at this stage is is quite quite good for him so Alchemist's final spell, Chemical Rage. Basically all this means is that for 25 seconds out of 45, Alchemist is a vastly more effective hero. And for the other 20 seconds, he's a vastly less effective hero. That's really what it comes down to there. Oh, not the stuff from Rubik. I don't know if they should actually fight. I think he's just, yeah, Black is just definitely going to make sure that this tower does. Great deny by Shadow Demon there. Very impressive. Nutel's trying to get out here. Uh, Alchemist is using his ultimate also just to survive. Gyrocopter jumps in, big nuke, both hits land, and the Gyrocopter additional stun manages to hit Batrider. He may not escape from this, he may escape. Oh, it's so close. He's extremely close, but they just won't be able to chase him down because of that Firefly. Actually, with the Dark Surface, amazing self-save there. That was excellent. But this stun is going to go out on him, and I don't know if he'll be able to kill that homing missile before it hits him. Undying manages to... Nope, he doesn't quite manage to escape. Will Alchemist live? No, a double kill for Night Stalker. So that fight doesn't go very well at all for Fnatic. They, did they actually get Batrider? 
No, they didn't. This this homing missile will not kill him. No, he's he's back home. Smart of him to go back home before the homing missile actually reaches him. So finally, uh, the chemical rage from Alchemist. For 25 seconds, he gets his base attack time lowers. So he already attacks very, very quickly, and he's going to attack very, very quickly with this. He gets more health. He gets great health regen. He gets good mana regen, and he gets more movement speed. So essentially, for those 25 seconds, you're not even close to invulnerable, but you're definitely a more effective hero. So you always want to start fights when you have the chemical rage up rather than when you don't. And so the combination of those things leads to a hero who really, he wants attack speed items, he wants items to make him beefier, he wants items to help him farm even more, like Radiance, and he's able to get them, ideally, because he's got this Grievel's Greed. But in this case, this lane hasn't quite gone well enough for Fnatic to actually get the Alchemist to the farm that he needs it so far. He only has 32 last hits, which is nowhere near where he would want to be to actually to, to justify the pick this early. He's got Power Treads, which is a good option. Sometimes you want Face Boots, but sometimes, sometimes you want Power Treads. But at any rate, if you are going to take the Alchemist, you had better make sure that he's able to get that farm. And so far, they have not made sure that he's able to get that farm. Mouse's sort of scrappy attacking and positioning style has been able to really get them the advantage in this lane. This is the key lane for Alchemist. And right now, he's just not able to contest this lifesteal in any meaningful way. I'm not saying Alchemist is necessarily necessarily a, a trash hero because he's not he has been buffed a lot and there are maybe compositions where he could work but the issue is that you need to sort of balance him against the heroes that are popular right now and darkseer taking a ton of damage night sucker going all the way and he's probably going to get this darkseer kill he needs to keep chasing oh another great steal from Korka. he gets night sucker the haste that he needs to actually escape comfortably right out of here alchemist is going to stun himself and the extra damage black comes in he's going to probably kill alchemist here he might kill undying undying is actually silenced which is huge he's completely unable to contribute to the Team fight. And they're right under Fnatic's tower here, completely picking them apart. Really unfortunate teleport in from Gyrocopter. You probably should have canceled this. He's up against four players now. Will he be able to escape? He's definitely trying his hardest. He's got his face boots for additional speed, so he's going to try to make it out. The Keeper of the Light Horses won't hit. He escapes, but not a lot of Fnatic does. They lose four heroes for absolutely nothing there. And we can see that Mouse is in complete command of this game. This Night Stalker was a very smart fifth pick from them, because as long as you're able to get him that early, just tiny boost, enough to get that urn, enough to get power treads, and or or some, some form of boots and enough to get mana regen, you can really punish a team that's looking to get a lot of farm on two separate heroes. And at this point, Gyrocopter's farm is sort of flatlining as well. So Fnatic isn't getting farm on either of their heroes that really need farm to be effective. They are getting good farm on Darkseer, but it, it's really, really not going to be enough. This mechanism will be crucial for them, but currently they're just getting picked apart. And currently, as long as Black is standing right opposite of Era, Era is going to have a lot of difficulty farming without a lot more heroes here to help him. They really don't have any answer to this lifestyle this early. And now that he has Armlet and tons more money, he's going to become even more formidable. He's certainly vastly ahead in farm from where Era is. He just picked up Bracer, so this is going to be a drums. Good item on Alchemist, but again, <laughs> if you have drums and the other team has uh, Armlet on their main carry, like they're ahead of you. They're winning. And so we can definitely say that Mao's with a 6-0 and Night Star, but this is just such an inspired pick, really, with for that fifth pick. Really... You know that they, if they get any sort of room and if they get any sort of farm and they're going to have this dangerous tri lane, they, they will pick you apart. So it, it's scary for them. Alchemist is going to try to turn this around on Black. He, his rage will dissipate, so he is able to get the stun off. They may actually get the kill here, so good defensive play there. Will he be able to teleport out? Not quite. He actually feels the need to cancel it because he thinks, oh, he thinks he can get in the creep. He does get in the creep. And Black actually mounting an incredible escape here. Will he be able to actually stun him? Or will he rage expire? He do It does. It does. It does. Very tight timing there because the interesting thing is that rage is six seconds of magic immunity max rank. And uh, unstable concoction is six seconds before it stuns you. So it's a game of chicken, essentially. If if Alchemist pops the Unstable Concoction and Lifestealer pops Rage, that's it. It won't hit. But if Lifestealer pops the Rage and Alchemist pops the Unstable Concoction, it always will hit. So an interesting cat and mouse game that you're going to be seeing with that. And honestly, not one that you're going to see often because Alchemist is not a popular pick. And I don't think this game is going to really do, do anything to dissuade that impression. They do manage to get a pick off and keep her light low, and when they put all their heroes here, Fnatic is a fairly formidable fighting force, but again, if Mouse brought all of their heroes here, it would be an, quite possibly another slaughter in, in, in their favor. And now they're on the run. I mean, this this Undying is silenced. He has no mana. Uh, Nightstalker is just dealing tons of damage to him, and Nightstalker has plenty of mana left to pop another void if he needs to, which he does. Batrider has his blink, and just how can they actually escape? That's actually going to be a critical error. Era using his stun, it stuns him, and now they caught up. I mean, this Bat Rider Night Stalker is so much more mobility than they can possibly manage on the Alchemist, and they actually do choose to GG out early because, yeah, at this point, 
they just I mean they really just got got completely out out drafted I think the I, I don't think this was the right game to pick Alchemist. I just don't. I mean, it, it's it's a hero that is quite weak to Life Stealer. Just not at all stages. Like he can out farm him in the late game, but certainly in the early game, like that Triland versus Triland, they got a little bit of advantage. But the moment that Batrider and Night Stalker feel even slightly comfortable navigating over, you're very very you're in a really tough spot. And putting keep in mind they were running this Triland aggressively. They were running the Triland in the lane where naturally you are disfavored relative to the other team. So there's there's what's known as long lane short lane or suicide lane and safe lane and this lane for her is the suicide lane because like you're you're always past the river so you're in enemy territory where they can bring heroes in from here or here to attack you and so you only do that if you're confident that your tri lane will win and in this case they were fairly confident that their tri lane would beat mouse's tri lane and that's true it more or less did but the other two people in the game for mouse were extremely strong gankers that would just immediately tip the scales in the fa in their favor whereas the other two heroes from fanatic dark seer and, and gyrocopter would not tip the scales in their favor nearly as much as if bat rider or night stalker came over in the early to mid game so fanatic i, I think there's they didn't quite properly strategize for this game they wanted to try something new which was this alchemist but maybe it wasn't the exact correct moment to try it out and consequently they did get punished it happens uh, it's still the regular season of the D2L, so I don't think it's the highest stakes for them, so it's okay that they experimented a little bit. But definitely they didn't, they weren't even nearly as close to victory in this game as they were in the last one where they were favored for a fairly long time. So, unfortunate for them, but great play from Maus. Uh, this Night Stalker worked really, really well. Uh, Fata in general, I, I would say is possibly the MVP of this series. This 8 no this game, 14 and 2 last game on Quap, really providing just a dominant team fight and ganking presence from the middle. And really, I think, raising his profile as, as a mid in this in the, the Dota scene. So thanks for watching. I'm going to see if there are any other games on. I don't think there actually are any that I, that I really am, am passionate about casting today. But if I do see some, I'll definitely come back on. So thanks for watching.